Well, I mean, it's, it's based on it's based on a true story. Really, uh, uh, Badger incident took place. Uh, I did I did attempt to be a taxidermist for a while, but everything did go wrong. <laughs> so, the most notable event was the. Uh, in well, the badger in Bush. So uh, I did end up with an inside of badger. And uh, it's true. And uh, I I did find it odd that you could still stroke it, but only by <laughs> various methods. So um, I, I just thought it was a, a funny incident. And my friends thought it was even funnier. And they, 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 they repeat the story ad nauseum to uh, their taxidermy friend has got this thing. So. Um, and then a friend of mine, uh, an actor friend, suggested I try and make a one act play. So that's what happened. And uh, we saw tonight these amazing performances. Uh, uh, it was remarkable, really. I can't believe uh, I'm here and it's happening. So, uh, have it. I mean, I did it, I mean, I can relate more taxes than it was asked. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking on the way. I, um, a friend, people used to bring me dead things. And um, I was living in Galway on the west coast of Ireland, and a fisherman had caught in his nets, and the, his trawler nets, um, an otter that was in the estuary of the river, Corrib, and had drowned. And it was a tremendous beast. But I was, wasn't really sort of living anywhere in particular at the time. Um, so um, I used to work in theatres and I was always on the move. And then um, but I had a girlfriend who had a, a fridge <laughs> with a little uh, freezer compartment. So, um, you know, she kindly emptied her food out and uh, I crammed the offer in. <laughs> and, uh, and then left it there for months. <laughs> and eventually she just tracked me down and said, uh, you know, take that thing away. And, um, get out of my life. <laughs> so I, I did, I retrieved the otter at least, and uh, put my self respect. And uh, I, uh, I, I in fact did skin it, but it, it becomes sort of, I don't know, it's like sort of permafrosted. Isn't it? And so even the skin would sort of revert to this. Uh, I don't know, the sort of squarish otter. Ice cream burgers. So, um, anyway, I retired from taxidermy soon after that. And I've got playwriting. I mean, I live, I live, in, a, I live in the middle of nowhere. I live, I live in rural France, uh, in Burgundy. And, uh, I, I bought a kind of a, a ruin for not very much money, and I, I, I made it into what it is now, so a ruin with a roof. It's full of things, you know, I've got a, you know, ostrich skeleton missing me. I've got all my stuff, but everything I always wanted, which <laughs> I kept what wished for, you know, so living in isolation uh, in a mausoleum. But, uh, very, very, very beautiful. Uh, just me to appreciate it, you know, I mean, uh, but, uh, I've got skulls galore. I've got a. I remember, for instance, collecting. Uh, do I keep just keep talking? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone has any questions, feel free to throw them at. No, no, no. Well. no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I once um, friends would always tell me where dead things were. You know, too too big to carry to me. I go to the dead thing. And uh, I remember once um, someone said uh, he found a, he a seal on a, on, a, on a beach just outside Dublin. So uh, I thought, great, you know. And then I went down there, and I knew I had to get it quickly if I was going to get it at all, because uh, I missed, like recently before that, I missed out on a whale. In, uh, well, it would be a, a part of a whale. Either part of a big whale or all a small whale. I'm not sure it's kind of, it's kind of seaweed and uh, rotting. But I knew it was, you know, it was fleshy and, because it was putrid. So uh, <laughs> I thought I'd try and get uh, at least its teeth or its tail, whatever, whatever it was. And uh, I uh, it was in a storm, it had been washed up in a storm. And then uh, I thought I'd go back when the storm was eight. But I, I did go back and it calmed down. But all I found were tractor marks and the sanding. The, the council had towed the health risk away and buried it, you know. So 
I knew it couldn't hang around in these circumstances. And with this, the seal, I thought, it was, in, it was in pretty poor condition, but I thought it had its head anyway, for my, my skull collection. And um, I looked at it in the day, but there were kind of families nearby and children playing and all that. So there wasn't really decapitation. Probably <laughs> 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 with a pen knife and the skin was really tough. It's going to be a, a tricky uh, process. <laughs> I guess it was it, it just really it was very extremely uh, smelly. So, uh, <laughs> It also, the, the slight problem is that at night the beats transform from a sort of family area. It's, uh, these unsavory types that hang around there and, you know, growl. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I was a bit unnerved by that, but then I thought, well, I'll just, uh, I'll just get loads of Dutch courage and things. And so I went to, um, you know, Dublin Bar and, you know, those Guinness and all that kind of thing. And then um, picked up my, my axe and... Um, plastic bag and uh, headed down at midnight and um, the unsavory types were sort of gathering around and, but they all dispersed when I started attacking violence and they were all I kind of slouched home with my dripping bag and, uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I mean I you know I, I had quite a hangover the next day, and uh, in the corner of the room, this was a stinking head. <laughs> Another thing. And, uh, so I, um, I cured it in the end. I lost the lower jaw. I think I was a bit <laughs> <laughs> the blow was a bit wild, but um, I got most of it, most of his teeth and uh, uh, cranium. So um, that's in my collection now, my kind of fancy uh, skull uh, cupboard. In, in France, uh, okay. it's, it's a true story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so it goes on. I've, got, I've just got dozens of skulls and heads and uh, dead animals everywhere, slowly filling up. So, um, there we have it. So when it came to the play, it, it seemed like, you know sort of natural subject to uh, explore. Yeah. Do you have any live pets? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any live pets? Live pets? Uh, nothing, nothing live. <laughs> I had a lizard for a while. <coughs> no, I was thinking about it the other day. I, I, there are lizards in my garden. I saw one um, uh, it was last year and I sort of... I made a grab for it for some reason, knowing that it would escape. You know, the reflexes are faster. But this one must have been, must have been asleep or something. It was <laughs> I got it. And I thought, uh, so I thought I'll keep it for a while. Still, you know, and uh, I put it in a fish tank. And, uh, but it's just kind of, it's like a dead pet, really. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I remember I put um, a lid on the tank and put, um, put flies and spy. But then the the lizard still didn't move, so I rate the flies. <laughs> and in, in the end, um, I just thought, it's so boring, this is worse than worse tax So I, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of you know, took the lid off and released the um, lizard. The spider stayed. You know, it's me, it's odd. It was a charge of boom. So um, just, just, just stayed with flies around anyway. So. Yes, I have had a live pet. <laughs> <laughs> have you eaten pelican? Uh, I haven't. I have a, I have a beautiful uh, pelican uh, stuff, pink, pink back pelican from Madagascar. It's just a pride of my collection. I didn't. I found it. It was already dead. It was in a, it was in this uh, foyer to a zoo, a local. There's a, there's a small zoo, kind of near where I live. But it's a strange zoo. I remember going to it. It's the only zoo I've ever been to that has a price list. You could get a yak for, you know, at the time, uh, 3,000 francs. You know, not, not very much. But, uh, but now things, I think they've stopped that. But um, the, the pelican, I just made them an offer for it. It was on display. So. Yeah, my pelican, uh, my uh, penguin. A lovely penguin, I found. Yeah. Entire flock of disparate birds. <laughs> I was just wondering if you write plays about other things. I wrote, I wrote one <coughs> play, um, uh, another two 
I'm doing well, I'm going to do a three hand play. It's called Casanova to Limp. And uh, that, that, that was produced in uh, Ireland and Scotland. Uh, Casanova was um, on his deathbed, and two of his ex uh, lovers were there. The two, the two uh, real actors, they were there. But then I, the idea was to, I was going to make a wooden maquette with a couple of moving parts, so to speak. So, um, didn't have time to do that, so I ended up being uh, Casanova. <laughs> Unlikely scenario that is. But, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of laid there while the two women did the real acting. So, yes, I have, I have one pet and one other player. <laughs> Maybe Adam and Steve, you can talk about um, how, how was it uh, working with the playwright here and uh, how did that feel? Well, I was a little nervous. <laughs> I mean, he flew across the Atlantic to come and see us, you know, uh, to the U.S. premiere of his show, right? And he's there and we're teching him here, and so it was the first time in space yesterday, and with all these animals, I'm like, okay, let's get a sense of where we are. And he's right there, and I hope he likes this. It's funny, at first reading, John had shown me this play, and I, I absolutely fell in love with it. I, you know, it's a strange thing, but the, uh, the way Steve uses language, his use of alliteration and assonance, for me, it was so much fun mm -hmm. to get up there and, and use the, the language that he created. I mean, it really was delightful. So part of me knew that I was going to like it um, because of what he'd written. And uh, maybe that was absolutely to be the case. We haven't spent a lot of time so in the age about it. I would say it was like at first sight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The acting was wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Like, no, it just went in my uh, suitcase with uh, this, uh, the civet. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and, that, and that was it. They didn't really, maybe it just didn't show up in x rays. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't really declare it or anything? No, I thought better not to. <laughs> 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 yeah, they're too busy checking out my uh, Dolly Ed passport and things like that. They, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm delighted this, this, this made. Yeah. The other thing is that, that I could mention is that we also had a wonderful director, John Doyle from Ireland. Yeah, <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. We hope you'll write more, Steve. Oh, right. Well, my pleasure. My <laughs> pleasure to come back here, I must say. I feel it's great. What's <laughs> next for you in terms of writing? Um, I don't know. I kind of chop and change a bit, so I was kind of trying my hand at poetry a little bit, you know, sort of the sort of uh, last refuge of the dilettante. You know, the, uh, I think a biography memoir would be very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe some you question back? I, I did. Which, which character do you relate to more? Oh, they're, they're clearly both me, the younger and the older me. Yeah. It's the young you and the old you, right? Yeah. So. Oh yeah, because I'm from, uh, I mean, I live in this northerly, I mean, all this, you know, sort of ivory tower, in fact, uh, sort, of a, sort of a grimy ivory tower, but um, I, I'm, I'm from an industrial city in the north of England, and, you know, uh, so I, I created what I always wanted, really, you know, and, uh, and I was kind of quite, like, um, earnest, you know, and, and enthusiastic about this kind of thing and uh, I just stuck with it really. Yeah. And it's always it's always just it's a great uh, pursuit when you wind up in interesting places. I was in the uh Wagner Free what is it? Institute. Institute, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, my friend Alan there advised me to go to today and it was uh which is just 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 tremendous. Yeah. You know? it's, all, it's all this <laughs> with marvelous people working there and I think. Uh, yes, yeah, no, I'd love to come back to Philly. And you also visit the Academy of Sciences, the Water Museum, and all the 
And the others. That's right. Yeah. So what was your most difficult piece? Of taxidermy, um, it was difficult getting it. I mean, what I do is collect things from, you know, that's what I say, garage sales, yeah. meat running in, in France, and um, getting an ostrich back home was <laughs> tricky from the other side, of, one side of France to the other. You know. <laughs> but it's always like, it's always fun. I remember there's always a, a time when you wind up walking down the street with a penguin on it. <laughs> and they say it, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, you make friends, and, well, you make friends with people who like that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all part of the, part of the fun, you know, so, I mean, the, 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 the more sort of seamy side, really, is the roadkill aspect. I mean, it still it takes great will, well, I haven't got any will at all, but, it would take great will if I had it to, to drive past some roadkill and not pick that. You know, I have to check it out. And I've got to, I have to buy another freeze. I've got, you know, freeze full of uh, full of black things. But, uh, one day I intend to uh, to man it. And obviously never will. Well, everything's been by, you know, sort of, uh, by sort of hazard and happenstance. I, I just, uh, I mean, I have minimal formal education, you know, so uh, I suppose like a lot of people like that to just strike out on their own and um, well, What made you do theatre, sort of? In theatre, it was because I couldn't find any other work. I <laughs> no qualifications, and, uh, no skills or... Anything, really. So, um, I, you know, I've done all kinds of uh, those, you know, sort of door to door selling and, you know, those kind of jobs. And uh, once I remember I worked in a safari park, I was on the gates of the baboon enclosure, you know, and um, paid very little, but it was fun, you know, especially when the, the dominant male Hamadryas baboon escaped. <laughs> it sort of attacked the two of uh, German shepherds and, and uh, came past my little hut that I'd locked myself into. Because <laughs> I'd also read that these things can kill leopards and things. And that we as staff were expected to try and catch it. <laughs> so I just you know, paid to check people's tickets. And, so I wasn't going to do any uh, suicidal things. So, uh, so yeah, I did, did, did those kind of things, and then I, I can't remember. Yeah, I was in a bit of a dead end, as I recall. And um, yeah, so to speak. And then uh, <laughs> I, um, I can't remember what happened. I just got a job as a stagehand in, in Cambridge, in England, and uh, you know, carrying scenery around. And then a, a, a position came up in a scenic workshop, so I became a stage carpenter. And then I I, I moved to Ireland and worked in theatres and. Uh, and I was okay in theatres because it didn't seem to matter that he didn't have any qualifications. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
there should be loads of people like me. So, uh, well, you know, mainly like me. But uh, <laughs> so I, I just had a fun time, and I, I, I worked. I was 12 years in theatres there in Ireland, and then I, well, things. I we ended up with a, a business making scenery that, 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 that went terribly wrong. A sort of cartoon sales graph and down to the floor, you know. And uh, I. Uh, Ran away, really, and um, I just just headed off. I was going to go to uh, Spain, South America, and all this, but I got, I just stopped in France, and uh, I still had some money left, so I bought bought the ruin. And that brings us up to date, really. Mm -hmm. Did you write along the way? Did you keep any? any were you thinking of writing and putting the language down? Or? Uh, yeah, half-hearted attempts, I suppose. And, uh, but I was just too busy surviving, really, you know. And then, um, uh, yeah, no, I like writing. I intend to pursue it. Really. You had to read a lot, Steve, for the background of that play. Yeah, well, that, 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 that was easy. I, I'd, I'd read that kind of stuff for recreation, you know. It wouldn't be research, just research, and just kind of, what, kind of thing to read anyway, you know. So. Uh, I, I always go to natural history museums. I think it's the first thing I do in any, any city that I care. Some tremendous ones around. So, and they're always, I don't know, they're, 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 for me, they, they just have everything. It's sort of like a, an art gallery and more, you know? And, and they're bizarre and uh, usually empty. It's great places to be, you know? So. Could, could I ask you something? Mm. Um, actually, it's more a question for John or Emma. How did you come by this play? How did you find it? Well, yeah, you have to ask Emma her hat because she sent it to me. We think it was a ridiculously perfect match to the sort of distorted vision of Iron Age and dead thing. I mean, it's like really worked with us. But, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I, I know that it came across her desk and she read it as part of the stuff. She, she uh, isn't here to answer for herself. I, uh, she got it directly from a play of pie and a pint in Scotland from which we get the idea of a play of pie and a pint in, in Glasgow. They said we had it here. It was fantastic. It was a real treat. Try it. Ah. Okay. I was just wondering, you're listening to everything, I was just wondering how it arrived here. That's how it is. But now, yeah. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in the thank absence you. of uh, Emma, may I thank you all very much for everything.